Hey there, in this video, I'm gonna show you five ways that you can increase your block limit in Notion. So the first hack I have for you is right in front of you. That's right, this is actually one block of text right here. And I've reached out to the Notion team earlier and they have confirmed that you can keep an infinite amount of text inside a single block. And instead of pressing enter for typing a new line as you normally would, in this case it would create a new block as you can see here. Instead what we're gonna do is hold down shift on your keyboard and press enter. And that will simply create a new line inside the same block. As you can see we are still inside the same block. And I also threw in some bullet characters here to create a bulleted list effect inside this one block. You can search for these characters online and then you can just copy and paste it inside the block and boom, there is another bullet point inside one block. So say if you were working on a paper or an essay or a report, you could just keep all that text inside of one block. All right, let's move on to hack number two. So hack number two is similar to the first hack, but instead of typing inside of Notion, we're gonna be linking to text that lives outside of Notion. The first example here we have is a embedded Google Drive file. And what's crazy about this is you can actually type inside of this Google Doc, inside of this embed block, which is just super convenient that you can actually do editing inside of this window. You know, say you can't afford to upgrade your Notion account right now, and let's say you already have files already in Google Drive. Well, instead of moving those files over to Notion, what you could do instead is keep those files in Google Drive and just use Notion to add new information and then maybe import it a little bit each month. That way you don't max out your block limit. And if we go back to the main page here, of course you have a second option of just attaching a PDF file. You of course can't edit this file, it's essentially a static image, but if you don't use Google Docs or you're not a fan of Google Docs, you could just type up stuff on your computer hard drive using whatever word processing app that comes with your computer, typing it up and then exporting that document as a PDF and then attaching that PDF to Notion. Of course, if you want to make any edits, you're going to have to go back to your computer, make those edits, and then export the PDF again. So of course, the Google Drive example is more flexible, but if you have files that you know aren't going to need editing and you know they're never going to change, there's no reason to, and then I can easily see this PDF hack being a great solution to reduce your block count, especially since everything inside of this block, just like before with the Google Drive example, only counts as one block. All right, let's move on to hack number three. So hack number three takes advantage of page links and link databases. Let's say you have a page full of projects, but you want to show, but you want to show those projects somewhere else in your Notion Workspace account. Well, instead of duplicating the same information, you can actually link those pages in another page. So say any of these projects have tasks inside of them, and say you wanted to show those tasks for that project inside of a custom view like this, where you could sort your tasks and projects by due date or priority. Doing so would of course add to your block limit. Say you had 10 tasks in a project and you add those 10 tasks here. Well, now you have double, now you have 20 tasks, which is, you know, 20 blocks adding to your limit. But if you add a page link, it's only counting as one more block and every block inside that original page, well, it's the original, so it doesn't count twice. I'll show you what I mean. Let's back out of here. Go back to projects and let's say we want to create a page link for for this goals project click here click copy link we're going to go back out go into our filters again and let's just paste that right here and then you're going to want to click link to page and there is our link page now pay attention to the breadcrumbs here we're currently in the filters page but if we click inside of this goals project page if you notice the breadcrumbs have changed. Now we're inside of the projects page inside of the goals page. We have all these tasks inside of here, but instead of duplicating them, we're just gonna link them up for one additional block. All right, let's go back to the main page. And by following the same principle, we can do the same thing with linked databases. So in this page, we have some tasks and each task has a certain area associated with them. For example, this task has the travel area so if we back out of here and go to our filters, instead of organizing these tasks by priority, I'm organizing these tasks with the different areas in my life. If we take a look into this home page, if you notice, it's only showing me tasks for the home area property. 
And I'll show you another example. If we go to social, it's only showing me the tasks that have this social area property applied to them. So if you're not familiar with how to link a database, I'll show you right now. We're gonna go into this travel page. We're gonna create a new block. Press the slash key on your keyboard, then start typing link, and then this should pop up. Click on create link database. And then we're going to click on tasks. And why don't we make this page full width so we can see the whole database. Now, if you notice, it's showing me every single task in our task database. So in order for this page to only show me tasks associated with my travel property, all you gotta do is put your cursor over here, click on these three dots, go down to filter, click on add a filter. Then we're gonna wanna click on area is travel. And now this link database is only showing me tasks associated with the travel property. And regardless of how many tasks are inside of this, for example, if we go back over to home, we have three tasks inside of this database, but this link database only counts as one block. As you can see, if I move it around, it's all together. That is just one block. And it's just a really powerful way to avoid duplicating the same information more than once inside your Notion workspace. All right, let's move on to hack number four. So hack number four is a really simple one. If you ever find yourself wanting to add notes to a specific task or to any ideas you may have inside of Notion, instead of adding a new block, you can actually take advantage of comments. For example, I have a task here to write a list of goals for the new year. And if we open up the comment window, as you can see, I've added a whole list of things inside this comment, and we can actually keep adding more things. And you can keep adding more comments as you see fit, but because a comment is not technically a block, these comments will not count towards your block limit. You can keep adding comments and comments and comments and just use them as notes. And if you no longer need them anymore, just click the resolve button and it archives them away. And if you're not already familiar with how to create a comment, Simply highlight over the text, click that comment button, and type away. All right, let's move on to hack number five. So if you find yourself still hitting that block limit, then this final hack should be the solution to take care of all that for you. Notion lets you create additional free workspaces. Now I don't recommend creating a, a whole bunch of them, since doing so can get really confusing. However, if you really are in a bind and you can't afford to upgrade, or maybe you were upgraded and now you have to downgrade to save some money, just create a second workspace. To do so, click on your workspace name, and then just click right here to create a new workspace. You can either use this second workspace for another area in your life, or maybe you have a very large project, or you can just use this second workspace as like an archive for pages you don't need anymore. So right here we have an example page that we're going to move to our second workspace. Inside the page we just have some tasks. Just click right here to open up the menu. Click on move to. And we're going to move it to our archive workspace. And if we go to that workspace, you can see that that's right here. And I've also created some pages here just to keep things organized. Why don't we move this inside the unsorted page? Now, even though you have these two accounts and, and now you have double the amount of blocks, it still could be a pain to access your information because you're gonna have to switch between these workspaces manually. But what you can do is we can create a link page or a link database. In this example, this is already a database. So we're gonna click on copy link. Then you're gonna wanna go back to your main workspace. And then we're just gonna paste that link and click on create link database. And yeah, so you have a link database, just like before, only counting as one block, but this information is in a different workspace. And if we click here, Notion will take us to the original database. And as you can see, we've now changed workspaces. Notion will do that automatically for you, which is nice, saves you a little bit of time. And of course, you can do the same thing for page links. So yeah, using two workspaces is just a great solution to double your amount of blocks if you need to save some money and avoid that upgrade. <laughs>